Welcome to another Excel VBA tutorial. In today's video, we are going to cover the offset property. So the offset property belongs to our range objects and, and really how do we think about it? Well, all it's doing is it's changing our position of where we are within a range of cells based on the current cell that we're talking about. And so again, it's just changing our position. So it's saying, hey, I'm here right now in this cell. I wanna be right here. I'm gonna use the offset property in order to do that. Um, and this really comes in handy if you want to kind of loop through rows or maybe we wanna create a loop that um, changes every time we go through the loop. More than likely we would use some kind of offset property because we wouldn't know what that cell would be necessarily on each loop. And so we would have to use like an offset property in order to make it work. So in today's video, it's gonna be really quick. I only have a couple examples, but let's get started with the first one. Let's assume that we're talking about the active cell. So for example, right here, uh, when I specify the active cell, again, it is a range object, so I can call the offset property. And so all I need to do is pass through dot offset. And then there's two parameters that I have to pass through. Uh, the first one is how many rows do I want to move and then in which direction? Well, rows can go up or down. And if I want to go up, I have to go negative. And if I want to go down, I have to be positive. So in this example, I'm going down five rows. With columns, I can go left or right. If I want to go left, I have to pass through a negative number. So in this example, it's negative four. And then if I want to go right, it's positive. And so all this is going to do is it's going to change the cell that I'm currently at. It's going to go down five rows and then four columns to the left. So if I press F8, see how it changed my position. The next one's going to take me two rows above and then three columns to the right. So like that. Something I want to keep in mind, uh, if I run this right now, I'll get an error. It will say application defined or object defined error. The reason this error happens is because it's not that I'm going down too many rows. The problem is I'm going too many rows to the left. I'm sorry, too many columns to the left. And what this is happening is it's taking me to a spot that's off my worksheet. And because it's off my worksheet, Excel doesn't know what to do. And so it returns this error basically telling me, hey, you're trying to select a cell that's off the worksheet. You can't do that. So you need to make sure you go back and either change the active cell that you're working with or you need to change your offset property. So that's why you get that error. Now, if I wanna be a little bit more explicit and I actually wanna specify the cell that I wanna offset, I can pass that through. And so in this example, I'm specifying range C7. And then all this one's gonna do is it's gonna take me down five rows and then four columns to the right. And I demonstrated here that you can use either the cells object or the range object because they both are considered a range object within the Excel object model. So they both have an associated offset property. And so all this one will do if I press it. Oh, sorry. Okay, and so I, I changed my position like I expected. Now, because I'm already there, it's not gonna move, but you can see there were no errors, so it knew that I'm still selecting the same spot. So that's all it's doing. Now I can actually do a range of cells. So if really what this is doing is it's saying, hey, I have this range of cells, maintain the size. So in other words, maintain the number of rows and columns, but simply shift that size down four rows and then three columns to the right. So that's all it's doing. I'm not resizing my range, I'm maintaining my range. I'm just simply changing the location of what I've selected, but maintaining the same size. Now, in this example, I'm using a named range. You can use the method we do up here above. You can use cells. I've explained that in a previous video. They all work the same, but in this example, I'm simply using the test way. So if I press F white, again, I've maintained the same size. I've simply changed my location. Also, we can be a little bit more explicit and I can break it down into two steps. I can say, hey, first activate that sheet and then specify the range and then offset at the same amount. So this isn't gonna change positions. But as you can see, no errors. It's still doing the same exact thing that we're talking about. Now we can actually resize our ranges. So this is kind of like an offset in a certain regard. 
what I'm saying is, I, hey, take the cells that I currently have selected, but resize it by the number of rows that I want you to and by the number of columns. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to simply increase my selection of my range with an extra five rows. So I'm now going to have an extra five rows that belong to my selection, but my columns are going to be maintained the same. So all it's saying is, hey, maintain the current column selections. So if I press F8, I'm selecting that range. And then as you can see, it added the five rows, but it maintained the same number of columns. So that's how we use the resize method. I can offset and then I can resize if I so choose. So in this example, I'll select my range, offset it, and then resize it. So if I press F8, I've selected it. I've now offset it and then I resized it by the same number of rows, still maintain the same number of columns. Now, we have another method we can actually work with when it comes to kind of working with ranges. Uh, this is using the union method, and really the union method is selecting two different ranges at the same time. So it's like I'm going here. Hmm, this would be kind of hard to do ever since the new Excel function came out, but really all it's meaning is selecting those two ranges at the same time. I have to be careful because if I select in the cell that I'm already in, it's going to deselect it. Um, but that's really how we think about union is it's selecting two ranges at the same time. And so if I press F8, you can see it selected it. Again, I can still use the, the a little bit more explicit in the sense of I specify the sheet because up here it's assuming that they're on the same sheet, so the active sheet. What you're going to find with the next method is um, it's actually going to fail. So it failed. Why did it fail? It's because I can only use the union method on ranges that exist in the same sheet. So these two ranges exist in the same sheet, but unfortunately on the second one, I'm specifying sheet two. I can't do that with the union method. I have to keep it within the same sheet. Um, in the next method, it's the same exact logic. I cannot use it across sheets. The intersect method basically says, hey, select the cells that are shared between both ranges. So it's going to select this little dark section right here because it's shared by this range and it's shared by that range. And so if I use the intersect method, I've selected those four cells because they're shared between both ranges. And that pretty much does it for today's video. So I told you it was going to be quick. If you have any questions about what we covered today, so either, you know, the offset property, the union method, the resize method, the intersect method, any of these kind of different topics, you know, please put them down in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you with your, you know, questions and answers. Also, make sure to like the video so that way other people can find it. And if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates as we release new videos. So thank you again for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks again.